It's a big one this week. Lots of teasing on the channel about this, but what you're about to see is the last time that the little blue Fiat is going to drive without forced induction. And if you watch very carefully through the rest of the video, you're also going to see some amazing editing where I try to offset the fact that a lot of my footage was filmed without sound. Enjoy, guys. Now it's taken its final drive, it's time to get the deck lid off and then be ready to pull the engine. Now this should have been a really, really easy task because I counted up the number of bolts. Having not done this for a little while, I'm thinking, okay, we've got four bolts around the back where the cross member goes and we've got a couple of bolts underneath where the gearbox cradle goes and then we've got the gear linkage. What I hadn't figured on was the fact that the gear linkage took, as you can see, about 50 million hours to try and get out. Here I am fiddling, removing all of the cables, all of the electrical connectors. That's the throttle, that's the choke, and that's the starter cable. And then the other thing that I forgot is that because I'm planning on pulling the gearbox out with the engine, I've now got to disconnect all of the axle bolts and there's four of them per side and so here i am having to jack up each of the trailing arms to get the wheels off then remembering i've got the handbrake on or i've forgotten to take the handbrake off and i have to spin the wheels over and generally speaking what should have been a dead easy task took a lot longer than i'd actually meant it to but we're nearly there and a little bit more fiddling around and I'm able to jack the front of the gearbox up with a little scissor jack. Undo the 17mm bolts for the gearbox cradle. There's the front of the jack, just to hold the nose of the gearbox up so that when I release the four bolts on the cross member, it doesn't all fall down. So there's four 13 wheel bolts there. The one on the right hand side is a little bit difficult to get to because there's an exhaust pipe in the way. And it's broken free. And now it's just a case of dropping down the front of the gearbox and making sure that we can actually release the entire thing in one go. And then the engine is out. Here we go. And we'll take the cross member back off and fit it. And if you found on the channel, you've seen this before. Here's the engine out. Gearbox just being pointed out there because I am changing the gearbox. Got to swap the bell housing over to one of my synchro gearboxes and that will go on. Exhaust pipe, I removed. I'm not going to need it because it's time to start removing all the things that we don't need anymore. So that's carburetor, that's rocker cover all of the fuel hoses and the throttle linkages ready to put them on the pile. Got a bit of normal sound back. This is what I've removed. So we've taken off the rocker cover, standard pressed steel one because I've got a nice um, cast aluminium one to go on there. Off comes the ever useful and occasionally a pain in my ass. IMB 26, the spacer plate and the air filter because we're not going to need any of those things for the forced induction supercharge project. Instead, what we've got is this. There we go, cast alloy um, aluminium rocker cover, a little swan neck adapter with a flange that I'm going to be able to use to weld a pipe to to join it to the supercharger. I have cut the old air filter housing off. No need for that anymore because in its place will be this. This is the AMR 300 supercharger that you've seen in previous videos. And we'll have a little look at these flanges. 
that I've got my thumb stuck through in a bit more detail in a moment. But it's going to sit on here roughly in this plane. And there's no need for the Weber because instead what we've got here is an SU HS2 one and a quarter inch carburetor which again will sit roughly here sort of in the position where the old air filter was and then what I've also got is a bunch of exhaust pipe that I will be cutting up and welding up to make solid pipes there like that so let's take a quick look at this supercharger I've obviously done a whole video on this I'm not going to talk too much about this other than, otherwise other than it's going to be going on to the car but you can see these flanges on here are not the standard fitment what it came with were these and these are just again cast aluminium they mounted on there like that the problem with these is twofold one they're designed for a uh, like a rubber hose to go across there um, to mount to whatever intake system that you've got. I don't want to run that, I want to run solid mount. These are aluminium, I can't weld to them. And they're also too big for the pipe size that I'm using for the carburetor and the intake. So I had to make these up myself. These are just some bits of eight mil plate. Nicely rounded edges, and I have measured them up, drilled them, hole sawed them through the middle there at the machine shop, otherwise known as my dad's shed earlier today. And I've just slung a couple of bolts in there like that. Now, that's obviously that's going to help with actually mounting the carburetor to the intake and mounting the supercharger to the intake i should say and the carburetor to the supercharger but how on earth am i going to get this to sit up here well first problem is what we've got is we've got to set the offset so it's got to sit roughly here to get all the belts to line up and then what we've got to do is we've got to set the height now it's at roughly the right height there for what I want, which is that the outlet of this should sit roughly in line with the top of the inlet over there to enable me to have just a 90 degree turning backwards coming out of the charger and going straight into a 90 degree down bend into the inlet. So we've got a nice runner length there. Best way I can think of doing this is to make use of something like this, just a piece of four mil plate. What I'm gonna do, make some tabs on there that will sit on the outsides of here. So I can bolt through the tabs, weld them to this, and then use this to locate the supercharger in the fore and aft plane, and also in and out like that so we can get belt clearance and we can get everything sorted out in terms of the belt alignment and we can also get the route to the inlet the way that I want it. Haven't yet decided whether I'm going to weld this to the top or whether I'm going to cut once I've measured 50 million times, cut this and sink it down to sort of this kind of level into here and just use slightly bigger ear tabs to fit that there's a few different ways of going about it fundamentally the next mission is to get this mounted on the bottom of the charger and to get the charger position finalized once that's finalized it's really just a case of cutting pipe to length to join it all up i'm making it sound really easy here aren't i Probably because it isn't actually that hard. And I am, because I did mention this in a previous video, but there was no sound, so you wouldn't have heard me say it. I'm going to mount, I'm going to run a single belt system. So we're going to have a belt that goes around here, up, and then is held 
by an idler pulley that's going to be mounted directly to the block there to hold the tension. So that is my plan. So let's get cracking with making these brackets here. Now, whilst I have knocked up the tabs here, there's been a slight pause in proceedings because I've gone all Matt Armstrong and I got a little bit overexcited by shopping at my mate Toto's shop. And so we've got something proper cool in here to have a look at. Let's crack this open. So we don't run out of time on the camera. Oh, I think I've got a little bit of time left on there. Hopefully, I still think this is as proper cool as I did. Get into the damn thing. Now, just saying that Toto, the Canby Fiat 500 spare parts, he's not a sponsor of the channel, but he is a mate of mine and he will absolutely sort you out if you need parts. Really good service really reasonable and free postage and all kinds of stuff absolutely knowledgeable these are will send you voice notes at nine o'clock at night helping you out now this this is what i'm talking about equal length stainless exhaust so equal length headers little spring-loaded clips completely replaces the standard headers and then down pipes with this awesome bit of equal length stainless probably a little bit of overkill even for a supercharged engine but I mean let's be honest if you're going with the effort Charging it, you don't want it to be strangled by a shitty exhaust pipe, and also it looks pretty damn cool. If I do say so myself, everyone loves new toys. Look at that bad boy! Little kick down there, so it will clear the cross member. Might have to take a little bit out of the pinch weld, but that's golden. Anyway, that's enough of the toys. Let's get back to some work. So now it's all tacked in place, needs a bit of uh, neatening up there. I can at the very least start bolting this in once it's cooled down. Obviously it's still able to rotate like that, which isn't great, but I will be uh, bolt bolting and creating a third bracket that's gonna run from here and tie it in place so it'll stay vertical. But we've got, I'll bring the camera around later on, we've got the line for the belt correct. And it looks like we've got the line for the inlet to come out here, turn 90, and then drop down into here. Again, that run is slightly longer than I'd like, but we, we should be okay. We should be okay to fit it back in the car and to have a reasonable in that run. So I'll allow this to cool down and then I'll bolt this back on and we can start looking at then how I'm gonna fabricate this part here as I think getting this bit fabricated first is gonna hold it all into position because it's joining two bits together. Um, the carburetor obviously only mounts 
one here and doesn't tie to anything other than the uh, the supercharger itself so that's going to be relatively uh, relatively easy because it will just go where it will fit now I had started doing a time lapse of making this part and then the camera ran out of batteries because I'm using an old phone for filming it but um, this is what I've made anyway and as you can see it fits good enough in that gap there so assuming that this doesn't run out of batteries I'm gonna just do a time lapse of tacking this in I've descaled both of these parts here and I'm just gonna get this tacked in I'm pretty sure on the bit where it meets the supercharger there's gonna need to be a little bit of gap filling but we uh, we should be we should be good if I get it lined up nicely Okay, so we've now got this pipe tacked in, so this whole thing isn't going anywhere. Um, I will obviously pull that out and re-weld it, like fully all around, um, but that is now in place and we'll call that done. So now what I've got to do is come around this side Just clean this face up and then I'm going to make the pipe that the um, carburetor sits on. Well, there you go. I didn't bother filming the making of this because it's exactly the same as the making of that that you saw in the time lapse. But what we've got now is we've got part one. Of the supercharger install complete so it's mounted it's solid we've got an inlet pipe that runs at a nice angle to the intake there and we have the carburetor mounted at the appropriate 30 degree angle which is an hs2 su off a mini and so needs to be mounted at 30 degrees in order to have that fuel bowl sitting vertically and as you can see fuel bowl is sitting vertically so that is good all I need to do now which I shall save for next week is to mount the belt pulley tensioner down there and mount the belt that goes over all three pulleys I'll weld the top of that up, finish weld around here, and then I'll etch prime and uh, do all of the stuff I need to do to get these looking decent. I will make a third mount for this, although I think with the fact we've got solid mounts here, it probably doesn't need one. So it doesn't look like, even with the torque of this small engine, that that's going to go anywhere so i might leave that one leave that one out but there we go so part one of the supercharger install is complete i haven't put the tasty stainless steel exhaust on but you can wait for next week so next week you're going to see well next episode i should say you're going to see the completion of the weld in here you can see the fitment of the stainless exhaust so we can see where that's all looking you'll see this finished the main focus of part two is going to be taking this gearbox off and changing it for a synchro one and rebuilding. So thanks for checking out the channel. I hope you've enjoyed part one of supercharging your Fiat 500. Wait till next time because you should, should, fingers crossed, see it run. Take care guys.